So quick introduction. I'm Bart. I'm a senior sound designer up in Auckland at Outer Dawn. Um, while I usually deal with sound, uh, this talk actually explores me going outside that norm, uh, tackling narrative and design as well as audio to do an interesting feature. Uh, you probably allude to what that is. Um, so over the last few years, I've been working on a game called Goblins of Elderstone, and I'm here to reflect on how and why I created a new spoken language for the game called Goblish. So I will introduce you to the world of Goblins of Elderstone in case you aren't familiar with the, with the game. I'll dis discuss the reasons, process, and in creating the Goblish language. Sure. And I'll review the results of adding Goblish to the game. So Elder, uh, Goblins of Elderstone is a city building game um, or a goblin tribe simulator. It's a PC game available on Steam, currently in beta. Like most city builders, your job is to guide your units and your resources, in our case, goblins, uh, to try and set, uh, build a successful village uh, while navigating and surviving hurdles and hardships such as war, economics, trade, the undead, and general goblin pride and laziness. So every goblin that spawns in your village has, its, has their own kind of personality, uh, has their own set of traits, weaknesses, strengths, uh, which that determines how they approach the task you set for them and whether they're successful. And visually, as you can see, the game is very fun, stylish, and colorful. Right, so why create a new spoken language? Um, was I trying to solve a problem? Yes, I was. The problem I found was that when you select a goblin in, in, or you're in, in our game, a lot of information is presented to you as a player. Um, and, and it could take a little while to figure out exactly what you're looking for, or what the important details are. As an example, this is Ollie Greenleaf. Right below his name, you can see he's a holer. That's his occupation, which means he moves things around. His uh, health is at 100%, and his current action is transporting resource herbs, which is good, means he's doing his job. This is Ugox, a town watch. He's also at full health, which is cool, but you can see his current action is be lazy, which means he's not doing his job, which is not cool. And just as a third little one, there's Turkel Greenleaf. He's a peon. He does whatever we tell him to. He's transporting logs. You might notice his health bar is at 20%. So that might be a problem. Because in order to have a successful village, my goblins need to be productive. At the most basic level, when selecting a goblin, all I wanted to know is, is my goblin being productive? If yes, what are they doing? If they aren't being productive, why not? And what's the problem? So my plan was to identify this one most crucial bit of information at any point in time when selecting a goblin and providing instant audio feedback. That was the plan. A voice reaction from the goblin sounded like a cool thing to do, made sense to me as an audio person. And we actually already had some tap react sounds that we put into alpha. Uh, it was just gibberish, two lines that cycled over and over again. So I wanted to replace those with something more robust and helpful. The plan was to design a proper dialogue feedback system. This will determine the goblin's most important current action, job, trait, or mood, and obviously tell you through dialogue. You can see there, I prioritize the importance. So at the bottom, priority eights mean the goblin is working, that's cool. Uh, you can tell me what he's doing. If he's not working, priorities one to seven, you know, we have a problem. Either they're rioting or they're being attacked or they're attacking somebody, or they're hungry, or they're asleep. I want to know what's going on. So this system, the idea was to give a quick indication of what the goblins uh, was doing, and if you needed attention in any other way. So on the right is, yeah, the initial voice script I put together, based on the priorities or the conditions. Um, I covered everything I could, and you can see the script, yeah, just reflects everything that uh, was on a card that's available to you and everything that's in the priority list. I recorded these once the initial script was done. Pretty straightforward, obviously placeholder video by myself. Um, added them to sound events as sound events into FMOD. Fairly straightforward. The more technical aspect was getting them into Unreal um, using their blueprints. Having said that, having good design, with the design on paper, it wasn't too bad. And thankfully, I was able to get everything implemented fairly quickly with the help of our coders. So big shout out to Roy, especially. Um, so yeah, with that in, 
I was basically ready to showcase this to the team. And this is what it sounded like. So this is Bungus. He's a town watch. He's being lazy. You can hear there's a battle happening. So he's not doing his job. Hungry. So hungry. He should be weaving, but he's not weaving because he's hungry. What sticks? Sticks! Sticks, sticks, sticks! Ah! Cool! Need warm! Making, making, crafting, making, making thing! Make thing! I don't know why it sounds Eastern European there, but... Um, so, on paper, it sounds like a great idea. Um, you could probably tell something feels a little bit weird, a little bit off. Um, it was video placeholder by me, but upon review of the team, we found that the problem was primarily that the goblins were now suddenly speaking English. Um, we had this weird kind of goblin uncanny valley where the English made them sound like cutesy little humans uh, rather than goblins. And the video feedback that they were giving us was pretty plain and boring, like stick sticks, little sticks. Um, cute, but... Mm. And I mentioned before, yeah, in the game, we were, it, the game was already in alpha at this stage, and we had those two kind of placeholder sounds, which were basically gibberish. Um, so we didn't want to suddenly turn them into English goblins for our current players. It would just be a, yeah, weird. Um, with that in mind, I started thinking about gibberish. So gibberish languages have proved successful in popular media in the past. My favorite is the Minyanese or the banana language in a Minyan series of films. Um, not only is the kind of sped up high pitched voices that they talk in cute, makes them lovable, but also when they talk gibberish, it implies they have a way of communicating with each other. They have this kind of comprehensive verbal communication, which is something I was going for in my system. Um, compared to the minions, however, our, our goblins aren't so slapstick comedy, uh, they're kind of a bit more chill, sophisticated, down to earth. And not only that, our goblins are cute, but they can also be rather vicious, uh, similar to gremlins. Because sometimes our goblins like to start riots and murder each other. That's the thing. So I thought if our gob goblins can't speak English, why not gibberish? I mentioned to you before there were two placeholder sounds put in during alpha. Um, and these lines were Zala and Duck to Gun. That's all you would ever hear when tapping on a goblin, selecting a goblin. And I figured the players are currently used to hearing this kind of language. Why don't we use this as a starting point to create our own kind of language? So I took these two lines and I had to decide what they would meant. I thought I'd make them general greeting lines. Za would mean we, us, I, me. La would mean good. So basically tapping on a goblin, za la means we good, I'm good. Similar to duck to gun, duck would, be, uh, would mean wish, to means you, gun means health. Wish you health. Very simple, nice greeting lines. And from there, I went back to my script and started a cheat sheet. I love spreadsheets, you'll see a few of them here. Um, yeah, so I would use this to uh, translate goblish to English, English to goblish. Um, it started off quite small. It started to grow. Uh, this is not the final version. It, it's still growing. We're still in beta. Um, and this, this part turned out to be a really, really enjoyable process and exercise that I didn't expect. So creating these words, uh, there wasn't really a formula I came up to do this but there were four ways I would translate it. The first way would be a reference to the English language itself. Persian would become potter. Burn would become skeller, as in skeleton. Sometimes there were references to other languages. You being tu, which is Italian for you. King being krul, which is Polish for king. And son being sol, which is Latin for son. Occasionally they were onomatopoeias, where it's, the word sounds like what it is. So loud became bam. And tool became tucker, as in nailing a nail, <laughs> hammering a nail, sorry. And occasionally, or most likely, it was completely random. Gold being zanga, as an example, and time being ga. The great thing about using these various methods 
was that there was a variety in their language. If I had just used the first system, it would be obvious and kind of boring because you can, yeah, you're just making cute words out of the English language. But this was more interesting and there was actual logic behind and structure and reason um, behind the gibberish. I did my best to hold structure, keep words as small as possible, uh, reusing as many as words as I could, you know, using prefix, prefixes and suffixes to create similar words. So some quick examples, ba meant you're talking about an animal. If you want a more specific animal, there's a code before it, so it becomes zigba for pig, wokba for wog, ababa for sheep. Um, chagro means chaotic, angry, or dangerous. Um, so chagro ba would mean chaotic, angry, dangerous animal. That's the way a goblin would say monster. Uh, fa means up, because I said so. And so up, fa ba means up animal or a creature, bird. And again, like with the animals, a more specific bird or a creature, we just have a prefix of egle fa ba, something along those lines. Gri meant food. Uh, what type of food? If it's meat, ba gri, animal meat. If you want a more specific meat, zig ba gri, pork. Uh, just a couple more examples. Gav meaning time, which saw before. Sol and kul means sun cold, so sol ga means sun time or summer. Kul ga means cold time or winter. So you kind of get the idea. I just scroll through these. Um, by no means a perfectly crafted language, but I did, I did my best to stick to the rules and minimize word bloat. And again, I can't stress how super fun this exercise was. Right, so with the new goblish script complete, I recorded these lines myself, added them to the project. It was sounding cool. The team was happy with it. Um, much better than the previous English language version. But I knew that we needed professional voice talent involved to make this uh, feature really, really shine. The, lang the language was well crafted. We had a good script. So I created a little audition script and held auditions for both female and male goblins, uh, about 50 each. I emphasized that this was a custom language I made sure that the script had um, English translations to give each line context, obviously. Uh, the goblin's attitude should sit somewhere between minions and gremlins, like you saw before, more in the middle. Uh, the script had a good variety of lines uh, to see the talent's, um, I guess, dynamic range in terms of sound level and emotional level. And I also gave minimal direction on purpose, as I was after each talent's interpretation of the goblin's. Um, I've been doing this for almost two decades and I've found success in voice, voice talent casting uh, by allowing the actors to contribute to the realization of the character more often than not. As you can imagine, this was a very exciting time when the gibberish came in. Uh, there was a lot of very interesting takes. It took me a while to kind of shortlist each role down to about five auditions each. And with the help of our studio manager, our goblin leader, Gustav Seymour, we made our selection. And I just want to give these people a shout out. Tara Travis and Vince Malamed. Uh, want to give them props. They embodied the goblin spirit perfectly. And I don't think either of them had much experience recording professional gibberish, but they actually nailed it. So what you hear now is kind of the end result. Tata. Tata. Riburu. Sladazibi, Stangazibi, Tamazibi, Vinegzala. Tozanga, Loga, Zabu, Tinkulu, Papa Zakun, Meh, Gobi Dinka, Gobi Dinkulu, Deh, Gobi no Libby. Skiva. Lobla <laughs> So no question to me, uh, the goblish definitely injected some life and character into the goblins. 
uh, as you could hopefully hear, the sounds were more aesthetically pleasing than the English version originally and much less awkward. And you also would have noticed the additional dialogue, uh, occasionally poking fun of the situation or a goblin's life as a result of having a logical and consistent way to construct sentences. So essentially I could get away with putting any reference or Easter egg I wanted into this game. And I did. Um, and of course, again, the voice talent convinc uh, convincingly reflected uh, the goblins' feelings because Tara and Vince both um, treated goblish with the same respect they would any other language, which I truly, truly appreciate. So, final thoughts. Did I accomplish what I set out to do? Was the problem with the goblin information overload, uh, overload solved? Yes, by selecting a goblin, we now receive instant feedback uh, to let us know if something is stopping Goblin from doing their job, thanks to the VO talent's convincing acting, uh, even without a full understanding of Goblish. And yes, even in the lower priorities, uh, when a Goblin is being productive, there is appropriate VO feedback. However, there's uh, more of a um, language barrier, so to speak, uh, to them, on a lesser priorities. So the question becomes, is this new language barrier in the lower priorities a new problem to be solved? No, and here's why. So by introducing goblish language, the goblish language into our game, we've accomplished something far greater than simply, you know, feedback functionality. Honestly, most of the dev team have no idea what the goblish means. Um, they don't understand and they don't have to. But if they want to, they could decode it, as could the players. I, I guess in any game, there are many kind of nuanced details in a game environment when stitched together kind of make a more believable, immersive, and living world. Um, I mean, yeah, everyone who plays games, whether it's just a randomly placement of props on a level, um, the skybox simply tells you what time of day or the weather, uh, the VFX that kind of add the believable aura to all the actions, um, the handcrafted animations of the living creatures inside that world, and sometimes the spoken dialect of the more intelligent creatures found inside. Individually, these deta details will often get overlooked, uh, accepted as simply being there, snubbed off, let alone truly understood. But I believe in unison, they can make your game world seem believable, complete, and alive. So the goblins of Elderstone now have a voice. And they're like babbling babies. The, wor the words hold conviction. Um, they express to you their feelings, concerns, whether you literally understand them or not. Um, and not only when tapping on a goblin, but as you saw, also when we kind of see, you know, the everyday kind of tasks in, in, in action. Um, so why I didn't really set out to create a new language, as the talk initially um, suggested, I somehow did. And I'm glad that I did, uh, because it was a really, really enjoyable and rewarding exercise. And this feature obviously is very, very personal to me because I oversaw and did everything. Um, and I may be biased, but I strongly believe that the introduction of Goblish um, has definitely added immensely to the immersion of our game. And that's what I'm more, most excited about in game development. So thank you and duck to gun. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, feel free. Yes. Are you going to um, like like add a little booklet to your game to help your, the users translate the goblish if they can, or are you just gonna just make it like a thing that people your community must translate and figure out what um, yes. sheep means or what? Again, and I think about this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So I wish, you know, I, I hope we can get to that level where the game is successful enough or appreciated enough that we do get, you know, those wikis coming up, those Reddit posts coming up where people are trying to work out what they're saying. I mean, that to me, um, again, this being so personal to me because it was, it was I, I went all in, um, I would love to see that. What I don't want to do is, um, yeah, I, I kind of don't want to give too much away. Like I was very hesitant about putting up examples here because I felt like I'm giving away my secrets, a secret language. Um, but yeah, I, you know, obviously I wanted to share what I did. Um, to, but to answer your question, yeah, I wouldn't, 
I would love for the community to take charge because I guess when I when I play games or when I played games in the past, you know, it's it's always that you look at the wikis, you don't look at the official website, you don't look at the manual. That just gives you the functions of the game. This is this is beyond that. You know, we've solved partly a functional problem, but it's it's the game world. It's like you know when I played Portal, when you you know is Portal part of Half Life world? That kind of thing. It's it's all connected. Um, I mean, we have goblins in other games that we're developing, you know, a day in the same world. I, I love that kind of idea of, you know, world building um, and just going beyond that functional level as much as we can. I hope that answers the question. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, do goblins have a contestable personality, like the same one lines, I mean, the same other lines? Uh, no. Um, no, it's all based on the conditions, essentially. So when I say they have, because they have, there's many different traits. Um, your goblin can spawn as either being good at a, as a worker, being good at a faith job, or being good as a as a war job, so to speak. So you you know you kind of choose one, and that changes your skin tone based on that. And then you have traits. Some of them, for example, will um, never sleep, which at first sounds like a cool thing. But then you realize um, that doesn't mean they don't get lazy. It's, it's, it's very complex. There's a lot of traits and a lot of moods. Like, I didn't go through that. When I showed you that, if I can go back, if I showed you the, that slide, like, I just, I just mentioned the name, the occupation, the health, and the current action. All this I haven't covered, let alone the tabs. That's what I'm saying. There's so much information. And I love games that give you information, obviously, because you can jump in and really study what's going on. In our game, you can pause at any point in time and just hone in. But, you know, I want to just quickly know. And you could cycle through the goblins. So you can go tap, 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 tap. And then you suddenly hear, and you go, okay, back. What's going on here? You know, and that's kind of important to do when there's like maybe you have close to 100 goblins. So... Yeah, it's all conditional based. There's no, um, yeah, that's where their personalities come from. Because some of them will be more whiny, some of them will be more warlike and just yell at you all the time that that will, Wah! Yeah, so, yeah. Yes? Uh, bungus. Bungus. Is there any bungus left? <laughs> I, it's just a name. I, I, I didn't come up with the names, um, yeah. I believe you can create your own names. I know you, you select your tribe name, Greenleaf, in this case, when I uh, recorded these. But yeah, obviously, when you start the game, you auto generate the names if you like, or you can switch around who goes into your roster initially. It's like it's a very deep and really cool city building game. But yeah, I'm not sure about the bungus thing. I could pass it on to the design team. So what you're saying is we should all learn enough goblish to make sure that we make lore-friendly names for our tribes and individual goblins. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you know any other languages before making goblins? Um, yes. So uh, primarily I speak English. I know some Polish. Uh, I know a little bit of Chinese. I know a little bit of Italian. That's probably the main ones. And that's why I think... The examples I gave you, I, I actually did not realize I had done that until I went back and had a good look. Because I was going back and saying, okay, what does you actually, what's you again? It's two. Then I was thinking, didn't I learn that in high school? <laughs> so yeah, and the same with Krul. I, I was born in Poland originally, so that was my n native language. And for a long time, Krul just sounded strong to me. So I just left it there. And then I started thinking, hold on, Krul, I'm thinking... Was that from that Conan the Barbarian? That, no, that's Krom. What's Krul? That's a, that's a Polish name for king. But yeah, it sounded strong. And that's why, again, when coming up with these words, you know, my mind goes, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, what comes to mind first? You know, trust your instinct kind of thing. And if I had to, I would change some things. But yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. And king is said the same way. So we've got um, Ba and Ma. So... No, sorry, D. Da is um, um, the male and Ma is the female. So queen is simply Ma Krul. To say king, Da Krul. To be non-specific, you just say Krul. So the options are all there. How, uh, how did you decide on language rules? Like having Ba Ma as opposed to Ba Ma? 
Well, again, that, that's what I'm saying. Those were the four kind of ways to do it. I had no specific, or the main purpose was, oh, sorry, my goal was to be as structural as I, as I could. I wanted structure. I put so many Easter eggs and quotes from movies that if they were in English, we couldn't do for legal reasons. And this is a cool way to do it. Um, yes. Good question. Um, probably not, because as far as anyone knows, it's gibberish. It's purely, um, it's made up, it's a made up language, literally. Um, I guess it, in, intention could be another thing, but that's getting a little bit more deep. Um, but on, on the surface level, no, I don't think there's any, I, I, and I obviously made sure there was no accidental, at least in English, um, slip ups. Yes. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, I, I, kept, I again, you know, um, I can't stress enough how just how personal this whole feature felt to me. So I took it very seriously, and I would just think about it every day in the shower as I was going to bed, and in the morning I would just try and get it all into my spreadsheet and see if it worked. And I would be sitting, you know, in my in my little dark room at the studio and just recording it, throwing it into the game, and see is it working? Can I see it happening? And yeah, I. I, I, I'm, I haven't gone down that yet. I mean, they, again, they riot and murder. They get angry. But we found, you know, that's the part that it's, it's vicious, but also it's a little bit cute because, you know, it's slightly sped up and, yeah. Yes. It's only uh, two four seconds. Have you found any, like, repeating lines that you can kind of hone in and you can that it's the same person over again? Like, have you done the pitching to sort of uh, get around that with, like, bigger creatures, lower voices, and vice versa? No, so your question, so that we have one, one uh, actor specifically for the male goblins, one, act, one actor, actress for the female goblins, um, and there's, there's only one each. So no matter what goblin, there, if there's 50 female goblins, they all use the same uh, voice, I guess. I, I don't change it. I want it to be consistent in that sense. Obviously, our, I mean, our system is robust enough that we can actually add three more actresses for, um, we've already thought of this. And so every time a goblin is born in your village, um, they'll get assigned one of these view actresses. And so, you know, hopefully at that stage, they will sound a little bit different, have more different personality. Yeah. That, that's, that's kind of, yeah, that's the idea. That's a dream. I'd love to do more, but if, I mean, this was crazy to do and I'm glad it turned out had the way it did. Cool. Oh, yes. Last one. Or other instructed languages when you're coming up with it, or did you just kind of wait? No, I shied away. I think I think early on I looked at a website like I googled, um, you know, language generators, and I I, I just can't I couldn't do it. I, I suddenly just felt so so removed from the from the feature what I was trying to do that I just I, I closed it straight away. Um, I had no interest in doing that. And, and like I said, seriously, it was really, really fun just making up these words and coming up with new phrases and then going, okay, I've got half the words done. I need um, to find maybe two more for pie. How do I say pie? Because it's some kind of food or anyway. Yeah, you get the point. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll be out uh, during lunch if you want to talk more about it. But yeah, thank you. Dr. Gun. Thank you.